Hey everybody, it's Anderson the Sausage King and today I'm here to show you how to make your own big old bologna that everyone's gonna love. So let's get started. And here we are, in the middle of June. <sighs> Let's get started with the spice blend for this sausage. And the bulk of this recipe comes from this classic book by Rytek Cuteass. Now, the internet is a great tool for research, but I do keep a number of analog books on the shelf for the end of days. And this is one that I think almost every home sausage maker probably already has. It's a bit on the techie side, but there's a ton of great information in here. So again, most of this recipe is right out of the book, but I've added a bit to the ingredients to craft it to my taste. And that is the beauty of making your own. So let's get started with one third of a cup of plain salt, and that's 100 grams. I've got two tablespoons or 15 grams of sweet paprika, and I've added in two teaspoons or around five grams of cayenne pepper. And I added this to the recipe because I want a little bite in there. Not necessarily heat, but a little something that lingers on the tongue. I always want my sausage to linger on the tongue. I've got one tablespoon of white pepper, that's 10 grams, and black pepper will also work here, but white pepper does have a different, more aromatic, almost floral taste to it, and it also won't show in the finished sausage, and I'm looking for one consistent color throughout this one. I've got one tablespoon of fresh ground nutmeg, and it's pretty fluffy, so that only weighs three grams, and one teaspoon or two grams of ground allspice. Now these two are another couple of aromatics in the warming spice family, so they should be really pleasant in here. And I'll finish it out with one teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of onion powder, and those are three grams apiece. In addition to the spices, I've got two teaspoons or 11 grams of pink cure number one. And that's to kill any bad bacteria that wants to grow in here. And this one is gonna spend a fair amount of time at low temperature where bacteria really, really likes to grow. So don't muck about and leave the cure out or you may be very, very sorry. I've got two cups of non-fat powdered milk, that's 200 grams, and this is my binder and two cups or 500 milliliters of ice water. Emulsifying sausage is hard work for your food processor and the water along with working in small batches is really gonna help out with that job. So now I'll just blend all of these spices together other than the cure, which I'll set aside. I'll dissolve that in the water before I mix it into the meat to give that kind of a head start and help it spread around nice and evenly in the mixture. And then, we'll check out the meat. Here are the meats that I'm gonna use today. And I've got five pounds of lean beef, that's about two and a quarter kilos, and another five pounds of fatty pork. Now these are the fattiest bits from a pork shoulder and mixed with the beef, it's gonna make for a fairly lean and dense sausage compared to most that I make. Now that should make it hold up very well when I slice it. And I took a look at several recipes and the fat content varied quite a bit. So I settled on this mixture because it lands somewhere in the middle of the pack. And I've cubed everything up for my grinder and it's all still slightly frozen. So now I'm gonna mix these together, throw in the spices, and then I'll grind it through the small plate before emulsifying it in the food processor. I got that all ground up and I'm gonna throw it back in here to pick up all the extra seasoning that's 
laying down to the bottom here. I'll just give that a good thorough hand mixing. Now, before I go any further, I'll get that cure. So, again, very, very cold water. Let me get my cure down in there. Let's get that dissolved. There we go, get it all down in there. Stir it up, it's gonna get a little looser. And again, that is gonna help your processor get through this stuff. going to want to do is monitor the temperature of your emulsification as you go. The blades are going to heat that up as they're cutting it and you want the temperature of this to stay down below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, working in small batches and starting with a really, really cold meat is going to help you stay below that. But if it does start to come up above 50, just add in a few ice chips to keep that temperature down where you want it. Now this has got quite a ways to go. I want to blend this until it's pretty much all the same color and even a little bit fluffy. There we go. It's nice, pink, and fluffy. We're there. Now I'll just work through about four more batches of this and we can stuff some sausage. For this one, I'm gonna be using these big red fibrous casings. Now these are an inedible casing, but they do allow for smoke penetration. Just check out the size of this thing. <laughs> I think this holds around six pounds of sausage. So today I'll probably just stuff one of these big guys and for whatever's left over, I'll use these smaller fibrous casings. Now, these do require a 30 minute soak in cold water before you stuff them, but the little guys just need a quick dip and they're good to go. All right, it is time to lock and load and stuff this sausage. I've got my sausage mix here and you can see that after being in the refrigerator for an hour or so, it doesn't have that bright pink color anymore. But don't worry about that, it's totally normal as this smokes and then cooks, the cure in here is gonna bring that color right back. I've got my 10 pound stuffer and I finally get to break out the big tube. This is the biggest tube that I've got. And even though you can see it's significantly smaller than the casings, it's gonna be fine to get the job done. Now this one is gonna be real, real messy. <laughs> but I'm just gonna kinda pack it, work out as much of the air as I can, which is tough because of this fluffy, fluffy sausage mix is so sticky. But just do your best to work out some of the air, and a little air bubble here and there isn't gonna hurt anybody. let this hang out here in the sausage closet for an hour put my fan on underneath it to get this casing nice and dry before I take it to the smoke all 
Now these casings are already nice and dry from hanging out in the sausage closet, so I'm not gonna worry about drying them any further out here in the smoker. I'm gonna go straight into the smoke. I've got some water down into the water pan and I'm running some apple smoke today. I'm gonna smoke these at low temperature, 150 degrees Fahrenheit for two to three hours, depending on how smoky I want them to be. And that low temperature is gonna allow the smoke to penetrate in through that casing and penetrate down into the sausage. And I'm not going to worry about raising the temperature and cooking these at all out here in the smoker. I'm just going to smoke them out here and then I'm going to finish them off in a water bath. All right. Well, I gave these two and a half hours smoke time down at that low temp. And that was just about enough time to clean up all my equipment. <laughs> Truly, if you're going to get into this craft, guys, get ready for some legendary messes that need to be cleaned up. But it's all worth it. So now I've got a water bath all heated up inside and I'll go ahead and transfer the sausages into that water bath to cook them. So this is my little water bath and of course I know not everybody has one of these but you can do this on a hot plate or on the stovetop. You just gotta monitor the temperature really closely and this takes all the worry out of that. This will hold it really precisely and cook it exactly how I want it. Okay, now I want to carefully put this in here. And I'm probably going to have to take some water out so I can make room for those other guys. There we go. That looks like they'll go. Now these little guys, of course, are going to cook quicker. So I'll go ahead and pop a temperature probe into one of those. And I'll pull those at 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'll put the temperature probe in this guy and let it keep going until it hits 155. Oh, that's hot. That looks good. Everything is under. My probe has told me that these little guys are done. They only took 30 minutes. Now I'll get these over and into my ice bath to cool off really quickly. Woo! Now I'll get that probe right down into the center of this big guy. Come on. There we go, right into the middle of there. Anywhere between 152 and 160 and you're gonna be all right. Well, the big boy here took two hours to get to that core temperature of 155, and I'm gonna soak it in this ice bath for a good long time because it's such a big sausage, I'll give it 20, maybe even 30 minutes until that core temperature starts to drop and stops any cooking that's going on inside of here. Then I'll hang this in the sausage closet one more time over the fan just to get this casing nice and dry, and then it's into the refrigerator overnight and we'll try this guy out tomorrow. Ooh. And now, let's see how we did. I am so excited right now. I've wanted to do this recipe for months now. My only concern is that the water bath may have overcooked the outside of the sausage a little because it took so long to cook in there because of its hefty girth. But let's take a look. Look 
can see here that my worries about the outside overcooking was not a problem at all. That is perfectly evenly cooked all the way from one side to the other. You can see some little air bubbles in there as expected. I don't have a vacuum or anything to pull that down into the stuffer. So I think that's kind of inevitable when you're making this at home. But it just looks great. The grain looks great and it smells awesome. Let's slice some of this up and give it a shot. Check out that bite. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Step aside, Oscar. The people have spoken and there is a new mayor in town. <laughs> the flavor is on point. The spice is subtle, but it's much more complex than store-bought bologna. And that salt content being right around 2% is great for a sausage that you're probably going to want to have a pretty hearty sized serving of in a sandwich or fry it up or whatever. It is so good. And the texture is perfect. Exactly what you're looking for. It's firm. It's not greasy at all. And it just has a really nice bite and a good mouthfeel to it. Just awesome. <laughs> so there you have it. I can't tell you how happy I am with the way this came out. And I've got a whole bunch of it. So I'm going to have some fun playing with this sausage. But for now, I hope you give this a try. And I know you're going to love it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>